In this video, I'd like to talk about how to find critical values using the chi-squared distribution. We'll be using the chi-squared distribution to find confidence interval estimates of the standard deviation or variance, or when we get into hypothesis testing, to find critical values and also p-values for hypothesis tests of standard deviations and variances. Now, in section 7.4 for these range of problems 5 through 8, we're asked to find confidence intervals given a certain confidence level, sample size, and sample standard deviation. Now, we're not going to find the critical, uh, we're not going to find the confidence intervals for these problems. I just want to walk through how to find the critical values. So let's start with uh, problem number five. Here we're asked to find a confidence interval estimate for the nicotine and menthol cigarettes. We want to be 99% confident using a sample size of 25 that gives us a sample standard deviation of 0.24 milligrams. Now, just to find the critical values, we need to identify the degrees freedom, which is always one less for a single sample of the sample size. So 25 minus 1 is 24. The tricky part now is figuring out how to use the table for our desired confidence and degrees freedom 24. Now, here's a graph of a chi-squared distribution for degrees freedom 24. Since we desire 99% confidence, that tells us the middle 99% of your chi-squared distribution will have an area of that 99%. That means these two outer tails will have to share what's left of the 1% left over. Half of that 1%, or half a percent, 0 0.005, will be in the right tail, and half of that remaining 1%, 0 0.005, half a percent, will be in the left tail. This way, we now have the area of these two tails and the 99% confidence. The way that we're going to find now the critical values using table A4, which is the chi-squared distribution, is as follows. Now, the chi-squared distribution table, the thing I want you to notice is the areas that are commuted on top are all cumulative areas from the right. Not from the left, but from the right. So if we look for degrees freedom 24 and the corresponding area to the right of these two critical values we're going to find. Now, one of these critical values has a cumulative area to the right of 0 0.005, or a half percent. This will be the right chi-squared value. The left chi-squared value has a cumulative area from the right of 99% plus another half percent, or 99.5%. That's the total area to the right of this left chi-squared value. So using 0.995 and 0 0.005, we look down those columns for the corresponding degrees of freedom of 24 to identify the two critical values as, as 9.886 and 45.559. Notice this is on the left side of the chi-squared distribution. This is the left chi-squared value or left critical value. This 45.559 is on the right side of the chi-squared value. And notice, this will be the right chi-squared or right critical value. If you need help trying to remember how to find these two areas that will correspond to these two columns on your chi-squared distribution, just remember the right tail will have the area that you're looking up on the chart, half a percent, half of what's left of the confidence after you subtract it from one. Now, to find the other one, just remember that the right tail area and the left tail area, or not the left tail area, but the cumulative area to the right of the left chi-square value, sorry, they should add up to one, 0 0.005 and 0.995. That adds up to 100 percent. Now, these chi-squared values that we found are good because we have 24 degrees of freedom on the table as well as the two areas we're using. But if we don't have the degrees freedom on this table or 
the cumulative areas to the right aren't found on here, then we run into a little bit of a problem. We'll have to use software to figure this out. Now, your graphing calculators, unfortunately, don't provide much in the way of the chi-squared distribution. So instead, we're going to use Excel. Excel is going to be very similar. There are a number of functions available to you. But what we're going to use is this chisq for chi-squared, dot inv for inverse, and dot right tail, or really cumulative area to the right. So the areas are going to be very similar. You can see in this screenshot, chi-squared dot inverse dot right tail of an area of 5% and 24 degrees freedom gives me an area or a right chi-squared value of 45.55851, which is pretty close to what we had in the table. To find the other chi-squared value, instead of using a probability of 0.005, we instead use 0.995, and we'll get 9.886234. So let's compare the two values that we found. Using table A4, using degrees freedom of 24, and cumulative areas to the right of a half percent, 99.5, we get critical values of 9.886 and 45.559. Using Excel, and you can see the two functions and the values used there, we get very comparable values. I mean, they're, they're not that far off. And the reason why is because our table had degrees freedom of 24, as well as the two cumulative areas to the right. But what happens if we don't have the same degrees freedom on the table? Let's look at problem number seven now where you're asked to find a confidence interval estimate for the platelet counts of women for the standard deviation. We're asked to find a confidence interval estimate of the standard deviation. We want to be 95% confident with a sample size of 40 that gives us a sample standard deviation of 65.2. Now, in this case, here's a chi-squared distribution with degrees freedom 39. The middle 95% is represented which leaves 5% for the two tails on the left and right. 5%, half of which has to be in the right tail, so 2.5%, and half of which has to be on the left tail, so 2.5%. So you can see for the right critical value that's going to give me an area of 2.5% towards the right, the left chi-squared value is going to have an area to the right of 95 and another 2.5%, which will give me 97.5%. Now, here's a screenshot of table A4 where I've cut off, you know, all the degrees freedom we don't care about. So you can see here, I'm starting with degrees freedom 23 and down. We don't have degrees freedom 39 on this table. So if we just use normal rounding rules and use degrees freedom 40, because that's closest to 39, then we get two critical values for corresponding cumulative area to the right of 97.5 and 2.5% of 24.433 and 59.342. Use caution when you round your degrees freedom. Because if we do use degrees freedom of 40, we are overestimating the amount of freedom we have in our sample. And that can be very dangerous. Normally, I would recommend cautioning on, on the side of you know, not overestimating your degrees freedom and to go with 30. But if you do that, you're not going to get nearly as reliable of a critical value. So the book has sort of changed its strategy over the years, and now they're just saying use normal rounding rules. Now, if we were to use Excel using the same chi-squared inverse right tailed function, we can use our probability, except in this case, we can specify our exact degrees freedom of 39. So using a probability of 2.5% and degrees freedom 39, we get a right chi-squared value of 58.12006. And using a different area of 97.5, we'll get a left chi-squared value of 23.65432. Let's compare the results. Using table A4, where we used an approximation for our degrees freedom of 40, because a 39 wasn't available on the table, and areas of 2.5% and 97.5, we get left and right critical values of 24.433 and 59.342.
using Excel, using the areas of 2.5% and 97.5% and with, degre with degrees freedom of 39 and 39, we get left and right chi-square values of 23.65432 and 58.12006. If you compare our two critical values, they're close, but they are different. And the reason why is because using the table, we had to use an approximation for degrees freedom for the only degrees freedom that was close to 39. In Excel, we're, used, we're able to use the precise degrees freedom and we get more precise results. So as you're working on the problems, if you view example or you ask you know, my stat lab to help you solve it, and you're wondering how they're getting certain critical values when it's not the same as what you're getting by using table A4, the reason why is because they're using software like Excel.